Brazilian truth, and, and we just thank God uh, that we're here at Rose Garden and able to have a daily devotional and come and teach the Word of God. And uh, if you have a chance, if you would like to attend church on Saturdays at 1 to 4, uh, we are on uh, Eastern Boulevard, 235, 235 Eastern Boulevard, <laughs> Suite 112. I keep forgetting that for some reason. And then on Sundays, if you would like to go to church on Sundays, you, you know, we also have from 10 to 12, that same thing, it's 235, right? Yeah. 235 uh, Eastern Boulevard, Suite 112, and that's Las Vegas, Nevada. Eight, nine, and she said 89101, I know y'all heard her, so I'm just repeating her. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, we're going to go back to the church of Ephesus and we're going to just look at it again because uh, we need to know who is talking and why are they talking. Uh, and number one is we can find out uh, a lot in the Hebrew scriptures that when it says the angel of the Lord, it really means Jesus himself, Yeshua. He was there and, and he was the one that was talking. Uh, you... You know, so that people don't get confused. God and, and his son are two total different people. Uh, this is spirit, and then this is this is flesh that becomes spirit through the resurrection. Amen? Amen. And so then what Jesus does is he goes to this place with his father, and he leaves us the Holy Spirit, the, the comforter. Mm -hmm. He is a comforter, and so we should rely on that comforter to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches in this last day, this last season, this last hour. Amen. And um, But I do want to talk about the church of, of, of Smyrna, which is in chapter 2, Revelations chapter 2. And I'm going to put these two churches together because, because of the whole event that is going on in, Re in Revelation when John is talking to the Lord about this thing. And um, we see here that in, in chapter 2, verse 5, it says, uh, it says this one thing in, in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. It says to repent uh, where you have fallen from. And so remember, therefore, from whence you thou have fallen and repent and do the first works, or else I will come quickly and I will remove thy candlestick from out of thy place, except thou repent. He says, repent in the beginning and repent again in, in the end. He was very specific about it. Repentance is for the believer. It's not for the world. It's for the believer to overcome whatever weakness is in him or whatever flesh and thing he's dealing with and to use the grace of God to get you out of that situation. Amen. Amen. Uh, a lot of folk ask if you can fall from grace. And yes, you can. You can fall from grace. And that's by pushing the mercy seat of God back on your life or on others' lives. Yeah. Uh, and, and Jesus was very specific. Judge not, ye be judged, or you'll be judged in the same measure. Condemn those, condemn not, not those. Another scripture says, uh, when you remit a person's sin, it's remitted unto you. And so uh, what that means is if I hold something against somebody, I'll become a far more worse person than that person. Because you have remitted a sin. And what you have added into your life is a sin that doesn't even belong to you. Wow. Hello? Wow. That's why the opportunity to come to, to the Lord Jesus Christ is very important. Mm -hmm. Because what he does, he takes your sin and he casts it as far from the east to the west. He remembers no more. He blots out your transgressions. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we understand that for every person that is alive, it's the same thing for them too. Mm -hmm. And that's why we don't judge people. Amen? Amen. That's why I just Amen. step, I'd rather step away. Now, when it comes down to the body of Christ, hello, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the rope. When it comes to the body of Christ, then I, as, a, as a pastor, uh, I, I have to do my duty and bring correction to where correction needs to be brought to. Mm -hmm. and, and if I have to execute a judgment, I would do it with the mercy and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And so I first will seek the Lord first on what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we all should be uh, when it comes to bringing any type of correction or judgment we, we seek the, the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Now, I could go deeper is that the mercy seat, it was called the mercy seat, which was on top of, uh, the top of the Ark of the Covenant. That was considered the mercy seat. And so what the blood of Jesus Christ was, it was sprinkled on the mercy seat. That is his grace. So mercy and grace always go together. They are to, his mercy endures forever. So does his grace. Amen. Where, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. 
And when we learn this thing, I guarantee you we'll be able to speak to people about Jesus and be able to show them that grace and mercy that they need for their life to come out of whatever it is. They come. How you doing? Amen. Amen. So when we when we come to the church of, of Smyrna, uh, praise the Lord and welcome. When we come to the church of Smyrna, let us read it. Uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things that said, The first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Who is he talking about? His son. There you go, Jesus. He, he was dead and now he's alive. Amen? Amen? And so he is the first and he is the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. And so we see here he is talking about Jesus talking to him. He is the angel of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Oh, and, and so, okay. we're there. Amen. Hey, my, we, we might be jam-packed in here, huh? <laughs> thy works and that tribulation and poverty. But here, in, here in, in, in parentheses it says, but I know that thou art rich. And why are they rich? Because they're rich in Christ Jesus. Amen. He shall supply all our needs. Amen. Amen. Not our wants, our needs. And so it, 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 according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, this is something that he wants to do for us. The, coming to the Lord Jesus Christ is a blessing. Amen? Amen. It's a blessing knowing our Lord and Savior. You don't come to Jesus Christ because you're going to go to hell. You come to Jesus Christ because you want to have eternal life. Amen? Amen. And you want that blessing. to It's a blessing. He, he, you're an heir of the promise when you come to the Lord and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the word of God says it. Anyways, let's go there. Uh, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Amen. Now, here we're going to start talking about the lie. Amen? Amen. And we're going to go pretty deep into it. And uh, forgive me for not... I don't know, I, I took out my Bible and didn't take the notebook with me. Yeah. But there's, there's three things that we need to understand. And if you can write these down. You have pathological liars, prolific liars, and then you have the average liar. Amen? So that's pathological liars, prolific liars, and the average liars. Now the pathological liar, this includes cold-blooded murderers, serial killers, and some characteristics include lack of empathy, egotistical traits, and the lack of ability to make meaningful connections. Amen? Amen. That's, what a, that's what a pathological liar is. Uh, a, prolific, a, prolific, a prolific liar is these people are chronic and impulsive. They have an impulsive behavior of lying. They usually lie multiple times in a day and sometimes for no reason at all. I don't know if you ever witnessed somebody do that. Maybe you have. I don't know. I don't want to judge. But. And then we got the average liar. And this is your everyday liar who forgets to do their homework and doesn't uh, want to attend an event or the church. Or he just, he'll say that, you know, he'll, the teacher will ask him, did you, did you do your homework? And he'll say, my dog ate it. And it is not, it's not because, you know, uh, you know, the dog ate it. It's just he was straight up lazy. Amen? Amen. And just... Whatever comes to his head, he's going to make it up, you know. My dog ate it. My little brother tore it up. He spilled milk on it. Or he'll, he'll make up something, you know, real fast. And so that's the average, liar, the average liar. But my question to you is, which one are you? When we talk, we talk here physically, but spiritually, have you done something? Have you become a, a, a pathological liar, which is you murder somebody in the spirit with words of slander and gossip and gossip? All sorts of things. Have you have you done that? Have you become a prolific liar, which uh, you have lied? You you bear false witness to your brethren. Yeah, yeah. Now, am, I, am I okay to say that? Yeah. You see, because if we don't speak the truth, we wind up we wind up seeing here in the church of Ephesus that God will take the candlestick away from you. Yeah, yeah. He tells you to repent. He ain't telling the world to repent. He's telling the church to repent. That's why it says the seven churches. Amen. Yeah. He's talking to the body of Christ. He wants us to repent. He wants us to get out of ourselves and let it be all of him and none of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to learn to pick up our cross daily and follow him. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks don't want to crucify their flesh. Mm -hmm. They scared to die. Mm -hmm. They scared of death. Mm -hmm. If 
you would learn to embrace death, I guarantee you, you would have life and life more abundantly. And I ain't talking about physical death. I'm just talking about death in general, getting rid of the flesh, getting all that behind you. Those fleshly things like gossip, lying, slandering, you know, fornication, adultery, alcoholism, drug addiction. Just get it all out of you. Get those, those, those deeply rooted issues out of you so that it's all of Christ and that you live life and life more abundantly. Now, when we go into the church of, of Smyrna, he, he, he talk, Jesus is talking to him and he says, Fear none of those things that thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall, and ye shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Ten days, it says uh, tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. And it said, he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord saith unto the churches. And he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, this is talking about actual real death. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the most craziest times that we're in because I believe this is fixing to fall on America. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very, uh, the Bible talks about pharmakia, actually, in, in the word. When we get into revelations, we go further deeper in it. Yeah, there's a word in, 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 the, uh, in the Greek, I believe, and in the Latin, but also in the Hebrew, I believe it, it means pharmakia. And so, why? Yeah, you, you just... Let the Lord deal with you. We come into a season right now where you can't go back to work if you don't have it. Well, that's okay because I'm going to trust the Lord. Amen. What he's saying here in the church of Ephesus, in, his church, in the church of Syria, he says, you're coming to a time where you better trust me. Either you're going to trust me or you're not going to trust me, one or the other. But you can't straddle the fence. Either you're for me or you're against me, one or the other. That's what he's saying right here in the church. The church of Ephesus, he's saying, get the lie out of you. He says, some of those that he called Jews that are not even truly Jews. You want to know why? Because the, 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 the Messianic church uh, of today, they have, uh, they have considered that Jews have curls on their, their face. That's a total lie. That, that's the Khazars that do that. The ones that converted into Judaism. Uh, and I'm talking about the Khazarian Empire. And you can, you can shut me down if you want to. The Khazarian Empire is the one who converted into Judaism. And that was all of Europe and Russia and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so what we have adopted, the Messianic church is that all Jews are white. And that's not even true because Jesus wasn't even white himself. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the hey, well, he wasn't white. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know where they got the blue eyes from because he's not, he doesn't have blue eyes. You know? And so, and so, what my problem has been, and I'm, I'm going to really tell you this, my parents, we used to go to a synagogue, and one day, my, the rabbi that had known my family, known my, my, my mother and my father, he sat there and told me, you, you look, you look Arab, you, you don't look Jewish. And I, I looked at him and was like, did he just tell me that? Did he just really tell me that I look Arab? Yeah. Well, so did Jesus. Because I know the part of the world that he went, he came from. And the reason why, one of the reasons they hated Jesus so much was because of the color of his skin. And because he didn't look like them. It was, it was dark, dark. A little bit darker than this. A little bit darker than this. Peter, Peter Kepha, he was black. Come on. Oh, Lord, there we go. <laughs> yeah, he, he did. And if you go, if you go to Jerusalem, I'm really serious when I tell you. If none of y'all ain't been to Jerusalem, I'll just tell you right now. You go to some of the churches that are there, some of the older churches. They have pictures where all all the apostles and all that they are all black. Yeah, I know, man. I have those pictures. Yeah. And I'm wondering, well, who in the world is this over here? Right. What have I been taught? My whole life, I've been taught my whole life something totally different. Mm -hmm. ne ne never. I've stepped into some of the, the nicest temples and the picture of Jesus was white. Mm -hmm. And, I, and this, I, I, I would tell some, some of the people, you know, because they asked me, I, I, would, I was looking at the picture, I would say, I, I'm, I marvel at this picture because somebody lied to y'all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been to the Church of Jesus Christ. Because I have friends that are Mormons. And I look at the picture and I, and I would tell the elders, I said, hey, that picture is wrong. Y'all need to change it. Take it down. Mm -hmm. He said, well, 
Why? I said, well, then the answer to this question now, now that you said why, I said, what color is Jesus? And the greatest thing that I heard one of them say was, he has no color, which was even the most important thing I needed to hear from somebody before I even let them even talk in my ears any type of scriptures. Because see, when he, when he died and he rose again, the power, the authority, and the light of all of heaven entered his body. And resurrected him. Mm -hmm. It took totally the it took totally everything that was human out of him, mm -hmm. and he became the light of the world, mm -hmm. the salt of the world, yeah. so that we could be the light of the world and the salt of the world. Yeah. And I'm telling you, what what man has done is made religion about color, made Jesus about color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get to the truth down, you got to get into history. What here is saying in the church of Ephesus and the church of Smyrna, these two churches, God is really wanting us to repent mm -hmm. and get the doctrine of man out of us and get the doctrine of the Holy Spirit in us. That's right. Amen. To where we used to be back uh, in the beginning, like in the book of Acts, they would give to the apostles' feet and the apostles would distribute evenly to them and everybody had everything that they needed. I don't see no churches doing that these days. Oh, they mm -hmm. take. You know, I I I I have suffered. Some of my 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 members in the church have told me when before they came to 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 the church, they used to go to another church and they say, you know, for fifteen years we we sold our tithes and offering. And when my wife and I heard this literally, when my wife died, he said, the pastor didn't even come visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, 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 he, he said this he said I never wanted to go to church again until I met Pastor Pine and I met you the only reason I go to church is because I know it's different the reason his son uh, was in a, in a uh, hit and run and I'll, tell, uh, and I'll say this enough because you know I have the, the right to do it you know he calls me out at 10 o'clock because he knows I'll answer my phone. You call me, I'll answer. I'll come to you immediately. And I, and I have said this, and I've said this to Dr. Bell, and I think you heard me say this the other day. If somebody gives tithes into the ministry, mm -hmm. we have an obligation to them. Mm -hmm. Y'all know my story, what happened. My Lord. Yeah. If you're in this class, I'm responsible for your soul. Mm -hmm. If I don't teach you the truth, then it's a lie. Yeah. So the question is, I got to teach you what a lie is. Mm -hmm. We just can't talk about the truth and don't talk about the lie. That's right. There's three types of lies. Mm -hmm. Three types of liars. And I asked all my students, I've asked them all, even in the church, I've asked them, what liar are you? Because mm -hmm. the Bible says, let every, let every man be a lie and God be true. So what liar are we? Are we the one that bears false witness? Mm -hmm. Are we the one that has gossiped and slandered and messed somebody up behind their back? Mm -hmm. are, are we the one that has forsaken the brethren and not gone to the house of the Lord? Mm -hmm. This place should be packed right now. Yeah. <laughs> you can't make it to church on Sunday? Make it on Tuesday. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We'll, yeah. we'll get a choir together. We'll start getting a yeah. choir together. We'll get us a keyboard over here. I'll call Pastor Jose. Get over here, man. Come play a keyboard and get a choir together. Because why? You can't make it on Sunday, just make it on Tuesday. It's all right. Amen. Just make it. Because the Bible tells us not to forsake the brethren for one reason. Mm -hmm. Forsake not the brethren for one reason. Mm -hmm. So that we're able to encourage each other, sharpen each other, and build each other up. Yeah. The book of Galatians talks about if our brother is weak, mm -hmm. those who are spiritually strong should be able to lift him up. Mm -hmm. Not unless ye be tempted. I mean, and one of the ways you get tempted in life, as here the church of Ephesus and the church of Smyrna, the way you get tempted in life is because you allow sin to constantly reign in your life. Mm -hmm. Now here it is, Jesus says, repent once, and then he says it again, repent again. Mm -hmm. The third time, he don't tell you to repent, because all he tells you, if you don't do it, I'm going to take your candlestick from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My question is, is, is the candlestick of the Holy Spirit burning in you today? Is there something that has stopped that flame from burning? Is there, has there been something that has stopped you from really, really 
exceeding in, in, in the, the high places, the heavenly realms of glory where God wants us to, to be at. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that there's 30, 60, and 100 fold. Mm -hmm. right. Where are we? Are we? It, there's the outer courts, the inner courts, and the most holy place. 30, 60, 100. Outer, inner, most holy place. Mm -hmm. Where are you at? Are you still struggling with sin? That has kept you in the 30 fold. I'm just saved. I'm glad to be saved. Praise the Lord. That's we the 30 fold people. I just want to just make it to heaven. Amen. I used to be that way. Then you have the 60 fold where it's like you get in the inner course, you, you clap your hands, you speak in tongues, and, and, and you get a couple of revelations on scriptures, and then it stops right there. And then you become complacent and lukewarm. And then all of a sudden, let me tell you what God says. He says, you're going to be so lukewarm, and I'm going to spew you out the mouth. Yeah. But we'll get to that later on in the other churches. And so God is telling you that, and, and, and now he expects you to go to a place where you forget about yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not you. It's all Christ in you. Yeah. Yeah. Where nobody can see. They can't see Dr. Bell. They can't see you. They can't see you. They see Christ in you. Mm -hmm. When they look at you, they know that you've been with Christ. You know what one thing about Peter? Three times he denied the Lord. Three times. You know what that says? That the image of Christ was on him so much that they knew that he was with them. Some people didn't even know Peter. And they were like, wait just a minute. Aren't you one of those? <laughs> Here goes Peter. No, not, not me. No, no, no way. No. But the Lord's saying right here in the book of in the church of Smyrna, unto death. It also talks about tribulation. Are we going to suffer tribulation? Yes, we are. Yeah. I wish people would stop saying we're going to get just caught up and we just, we're going to miss everything and we, and then yet you're going to still keep your sin and get into heaven with your sin in you. <laughs> you know, when, when the Lord, when, when Abba Father, God Almighty, the Father, looks at you the reason why he says that you did this in my name and that in my name and I knew you not is because he could not see his son in you. When God looks at you, he has to look through his son in order to see you. And that's why he doesn't judge you. But there will be a day when we will have to be paid. We're going to pay an account for everything that we do. And if you're not in Christ, you will suffer. We got to get this thing together. The Church of Spirit and the Church of Ephesus is one of the most important churches. But here's what he says at the end: If you have an ear, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit of saith unto the churches. And he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That means that you ain't going to suffer. You're not going to suffer. You'll see all of heaven open up for you and receive you. You won't feel pain. See, uh, Jesus took the sting of death for, uh, away from us as believers so that we didn't have to feel the sting of death. We don't have to feel it because the fact is, is that God is with us. The more that you're in Christ, the more free you feel from death. Are we all there? Let me give you an opportunity. We would just bow our heads real fast. Let me give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Word of God says this in man. In Romans, it says that if we believe, uh, if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. And I want to make sure that I read this to you properly. Romans chapter nine. Yeah, I think it's ten. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's uh, chapter 10, verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus, and that shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I want to ask all of you today, do you believe that? You believe that? Just, just shake your head to me. I believe that. And you're saved. You're saved. Next, the next thing it says here, it says, uh, for with the heart 
A man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. That's why I asked, do y'all believe that? And you say, yes, you're confessing right there with your mouth. Mm -hmm. And that is coming from your heart. For the scripture says, whoever believeth on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew or Greek. The same of the Lord uh, over all is rich unto those who call upon him. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now this is funny because I'm going to tell you something about this in 12. Jew and Greek, Jacob and Israel. There's no difference between Jacob and Israel. That means that your past, your past and your present, God, he takes that from you. He deals only with your future. And he deals with your future by you surrendering to him, yielding over your life and everything that's in you, giving it over to him and don't taking it back no more. Don't allow sin or temptation to overtake you. Amen to that? Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you, Lord. We can come to you, Lord. We can ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord. We repent, Father God, knowingly or unknowingly, Father God. We ask you to forgive us. Father God, I ask that you were, your light, Lord Jesus, would just shine on our hearts today as we go home. Father God, and speak to us, Lord. Show us whatever area that is not of you, Lord, and we yield that over to you, Lord, right now. Talk to us, Lord. Give us the guiding and the leading of your Holy Spirit, that Father God, that we are able to overcome every situation in our life, Lord. Teach us, Lord, to carry our cross, deny this flesh, Lord, and follow after you. Give us the strength to even pick it up, Father God. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in this class, Father God. I pray, Lord, the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob rest upon your children, Lord. I declare, Father God, and decree that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father God. And every tongue that is rising up against them, Lord, it says, Thou shalt condemn, Father God. We declare and we decree that, Father God, those tongues that have risen up against us, the tongue of infirmity that's trying to come and strike us, Lord. Lord, we condemn it. For it says that our heritage is of you, Father God. You are our righteousness, Lord. And we can declare a thing that we can declare that our cup runneth over. We can declare that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. We can declare, Father God, that you will lay us by still streams and green pastures, Father God. And God, we thank you. We thank you. We abide under your shadow, Father God. We abide under your wings, Lord, right now, Lord. And I thank you, Abba Father. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for everything. I thank you for the meat of your word, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you're showing us, Lord. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Next week, we'll be talking about how to break down these liars and how to see the devil coming when we talk about the next church. We'll still be in Revelation 2. We'll still be in Revelation. We're going to go through all seven churches.